You know, the Bible tells us that God is kind to the evil and to the unthankful. So how much more will God forgive you if you've done something wrong and you are his child? You know, we are not perfect and we are going to make mistakes. That's why the Bible also tells us to boldly come to the throne of grace. Don't get upset with yourself just because you have sinned. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But that is why we have the blood of Jesus that covers our sins. That's why we can continue to come to God. And that's why we have the gift of repentance. We can always come back to God and ask him to forgive us. I want to read to you Second Chronicles chapter 33. I read this to you all in my last video, but it was on a different topic, a different subject. So in Second Chronicles chapter 33, we have Manasseh who became king at the age of 12. And I'm going to pick up the story in uh, verse 3 where it says, For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he reared, reared up altars for Balaam and made groves and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. Also, he built altars in the house of the Lord, where the Lord had said in Jerusalem, Shall my name be forever? And, the, and he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also, he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with, and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. So this king is doing all of these wicked things. He's doing everything that God told the people not to do. He's raising up all these evil idols. He's working witchcraft with wizards and doing enchantments he is working with you know worshiping like i said the host of heaven so fallen angels all these evil things that he's doing every evil thing that he could do he's doing making his kids pass through the fire so sacrifices sacrificing his own children in the fire the most wicked things that you could ever think of a person could do he was doing all of it in verse 8, it says, Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them, according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. So not only is he doing these terrible things, he's leading the country into doing all these evil things. He's leading God's people to doing these things, and they're doing them. So the Lord spoke to them, and they did not listen. So this is what God's response was. He said, okay, you don't want to listen? This is what's going to happen. Wherefore, the Lord brought unto them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. So <laughs> they came and they got him. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to have the enemy come in, going to get you and going to bind you. And you're going to be a slave to them, no longer a king. So he was bound <laughs> and um, could not escape. And this is what the enemy does to us spiritually. When we are following him, we're doing his evil works, witchcraft, sinning against God, making idols, setting up idols in our heart, putting anything before God. These are the things that will cause us to be in covenant with the enemy and not with God. And as a result, this is our reward from the enemy to be in bondage to him, to be tortured, to be afflicted by the enemy. This is all he can do. The enemy is not going to give anybody any rewards. He has no rewards to give. But there are people who are deceived and think that the enemy is going to give them some kind of power, some type of prestige, some type of position. No. He has he doesn't have that to give you. Whatever the enemy gives, it's 
evil. It always comes with a price of your life. Your life, your freedom, your energy, your gifts, your talents, your health, your strength. These are the things that people are given in exchange for whatever little power that the enemy is giving to you. You're being used as a slave. You're a slave. You're a slave. You're being used by the enemy. But he has a lot of people fooled into thinking that they have power over people. They can control this. They can control that. No. It's a lie. It is a great deception that you are exchanging your birthright, the right to be free and strong and well and live in peace and joy to be enslaved and in bondage and a captive of the enemy. So we find that Manasseh becomes a a captive of the enemy. He's taken to Babylon. And in verse 12, it says, And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him. So he came to his senses and he realized Okay, because first of all, he became king at 12. And we knew that know that Hezekiah was a good king. That he took down all that evil stuff that was going on. So he was able to see, you know, his father worshiping God, the true and living God, and doing things the right way. But for whatever reason, he, at 12 years old, decided that, no, I don't want to worship that God. I want to get with these evil beings and these demons and worship Satan. So then he came again to his senses, like I said, and realized that, you know what, I need to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of my fathers. And he he began to look for the Lord, to seek the Lord. And and it says, and he humbled himself greatly before God. So he didn't want to be lifted up in pride anymore. He saw himself, he saw the situation that he was in, and he made a decision to go back to God and humble himself. And it says that, and he prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him. So God was entreated, and God listened to him and heard his supplication. You see, all the evil things that he had done, all God was waiting for him to do was turn around, humble himself, and come and worship him. So then it says, um, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. So he took he brought him back. He brought Manasseh back to his kingdom. He restored him to his kingdom. That's all he had to do is just worship God. That's it. He did not even he had not even um taken down the evil altars or done any of that kind of stuff. It just took one man to decide in his heart and make a decision that he was going to live for God. Let me tell you something. Even if we are not doing all of these terrible things, witchcraft and all this other kind of stuff. If we are not totally living for God and made a decision in our hearts that we are going to do our very best to seek God with all of our heart and go after him. You know, we are out of order and we can invite different persecutions into our lives and afflictions that are not necessary. But the moment we say, you know what, God, I'm tired. I'm tired of doing things my way. Yes, I'm going to church on Sunday and I'm praying every now and then. Sometimes I pick up my Bible and I read it. But yeah, and still maybe, I don't know, the Lord just telling me to say this. Maybe you're masturbating. Maybe you're watching pornography. Maybe you have a issue with being angry at people, treating them wrong. Think about how you drive. Maybe you're just cutting people off. I don't know. But the moment you say, Lord, I'm just, I'm going to put all this stuff away, everything, you know, even lying and not being 100% honest with yourself and with others, not telling people the truth, half truths all the time. Say to yourself, and once you say to yourself, you decide, I'm, whatever it takes for me to follow you and to 
give you my best, Lord God. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go after you like never before. Whatever it takes. When you change your mind, you change your heart. God sees that. He knows when you've decided for real that you're going to really follow him. And your life will be like night and day. In an instant, in a moment, I'm telling you, because it's something that I experienced. When I just said, you know what, Lord, I'm just, I don't want to do it my way anymore. I don't want to keep trying to do what I want and do what I think is best. No, I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to really follow your instructions. Whatever specific instructions God has given you, follow them. You will see your life change dramatically, drastically overnight. So I just want to encourage you that even if you are doing something that is wrong, God will give you the strength to turn things around. As long as you just make up in your mind, like, Lord, I'm done with this. I'm finished with this. I'm going to do the right thing. God is so willing and waiting just to forgive you and to make your life better and to change things around for you. Just be, just by making one decision, one decision in your heart, not even actually doing anything else, but just deciding, <laughs> I'm cutting off all this other stuff. Lord, I'm coming after you. He will strengthen you. Because that's all he wants, you to dedicate your life to him. For real, not for fake. So then it says that, um, then oh, Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. So once God brought him back into his kingdom, he's like, oh, wow. Even after all of this stuff that I've done, God brought me back to my kingdom. I know he's God. So after he saw what God did for him, it says, Now after this, he built a wall without the city of David on the west side of Gahan in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate and compassed about Ophel and raised it up a very great height and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed there on peace offerings and thank offerings and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places yet unto the Lord their God only. See, now he, he's, telling, he's telling people what to do and telling them to do the right thing. So it started with the king. When the king's heart changed, he instructed the people and the whole city changed. And then it talks about you know, um, his prayer and everything like that, how he prayed to God, you know, that's all we have to do is just pray to God. He's right there. He's waiting and ready for you to turn yourself around, but he can't make you do it. God's not going to force you to do the right thing. You have to make that decision on your own to do the right thing and he will strengthen you, but you really have to make the decision in your heart. It could be hard. It's so, so difficult for you to stop doing something that you really like doing or whatever in me makes you believe that it's something that is a pleasurable or whatever and it's it really not it could be smoking it could be drinking it could be anything that you have an addiction to <laughs> i'll tell you one thing and some people might think this is silly but i had an addiction to eating ice i would eat ice all the time and god kept telling me stop eating ice and not that it's it, the the bad thing about it is that it's bad for your teeth because ice is really hard, you know. It's like chewing rocks, you know. You're destroying your teeth, messing up your gums and things like that. And I, the Lord was telling me, "Stop eating this ice. Stop eating ice, Carla. You're eating. <laughs> Stop eating this ice like this." But I don't know why. I just like eating ice. But I said, "You know what, God? I'm gonna stop eating this ice. I'm gonna stop." And my teeth are better. You know, my teeth used to be sore. God is good to me. You know. It, it it he knows what's best so even something simple like that i just said you know lord i i don't want to chew the ice i still want to eat the ice sometimes i crave it but i'm not going to eat it because i know that you said it's not good for me and it's not good for me so just wanted to share with you that um you know it could be anything if god's telling you to stop don't do it don't do it because he knows what's best for us 
and he will help you. He will see you through. So I pray that this message has blessed you and helped someone to come out of disobedience and begin to believe God, to trust God, and to um, just do everything he's telling you to do because he has great and wonderful things that he wants to do in your life. But he needs us to, he needs you and he needs me to obey him in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Have a good day.